If you're like me, you absolutely love shooting and reloading the 762 by 39. There's just one problem. Bullets are difficult to find, and when you can find them, they're very expensive. In this video, we're gonna check out an answer to that conundrum. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I've got an action-packed video for you. We're gonna be focused on 762 by 39, specifically using Barry's 123 grain plated spire point bullets for 762 by 39. That's right, these are the correct diameter. They're 311 diameter, which is perfect for a plated bullet for this application. And this is gonna allow us to spend less than half on these bullets compared to quality jacketed bullets. We're gonna run through reloading for these bullets. I'm gonna talk about performance results with three different rifles. My AK variant, an NPAP. I've got an SKS that I've tested and a KS47 10 and a half inch pistol. So let's get straight into reloading. Before we demo the reloading of 762 by 39, let's talk about the components and load data. And as always, read that disclaimer in the video description by watching, you're agreeing to that disclaimer. Don't use my low data at face value. Always cross-reference it with multiple manufacturers, sources of load data. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm using capital cartridge, brass, reloadable, once-fired 762 by 39 cases. I mentioned that bullets are hard to find for this caliber when you go to reload, so is reloadable brass boxer-primed cases. Most of the 762 by 39 that you shoot is gonna be steel cased and it's gonna be Baradan primed. And both of those factors mean it's not feasibly reloadable. This brass is, and if you head on over to Capital Cartridge and use the ultimate code, that will save you an additional percent. So it is reloadable, it is once fired, and with the additional discount, you're gonna save quite a bit, just like you're gonna save with the bullets. Okay, Hodgson, CFE BLK. This has got the copper fouling eraser. It meters really well. I use it for both 762 by 39 and for 300 blackout. That's where the BLK name comes from. It's my standard powder now for those two calibers. And as we'll see when I compare this to some factory low data, the performance is absolutely awesome. I'm using Wolf Large Rifle Primers. You might say, hey Gavin, I'm just gonna save you from typing right now. Gavin, where did you find primers? I didn't. <laughs> I bought those probably 10 years ago. I have continually restocked my supplies. Every time there's some political nonsense or volatility or election, you can count on there being component shortages and maybe even 22 LR shortages, who knows? So the point is get on those inventory alerts, and make, you sh make sure you stock up for next time if you can. Okay, and then of course we've got the Barry's 123 grain plated spire point bullets. These are smack dab in the middle of the sweet spot for weight. 123, I've shot 122s, 123s, 124s. And then I've also actually, you'll want to check out this story, shot 220s subsonic. I'll have a link in the video description and in that article, the, the first link in the video description over to that story because it actually works really well for 762 by 39. Really, really fun too, and also very economical. And for our charge weight, Hodgson lists 27.5 min and 29.7 for max, and I loaded these at 28. So know that there is a little bit more performance potential there beyond the numbers that I'm gonna show you. Okay, so we're using the Hornady Lock and Load AP Five Station Progressive Reloading Press. When you're loading with a Progressive Reloading Press, every time you pull the handle, you're gonna get a completed cartridge kicked out into the completed cartridge bin. And that is great for these high volume scenarios like 223 rifle shooting, 762 by 39 rifle shooting, and so on and so forth. And here's how we're utilizing the five stations. Station number one, sizing and deep priming. I'm using RCBS dies here, by the way. Station number two at the bottom is priming and at the top we've got it open. We don't need all five stations for rifle. Station number three, we are using the case activated powder measure to dump our powder charge. Station number four is open. We could put a powder check die there. I'm actually doing a visual powder check. And then in station number five, we've got our bullet seeder. So those are, are the stations. I've already got the press run up. 
And every time we pull the handle, we're gonna place a bullet in station number four, guide it in to the bullet seating die. And then we're gonna put, oops, I got bullets falling off the table, overfilled my bin over there a little bit. We're gonna place a new case in station number one, place the bullet at station number four, and rinse and repeat. I wanna show you something else, check this out. This is my KMS squared UFO press light. This sheds some light on the subject, as they say. Another deal here, UR10 discount code at kmsquared.com will get you 10% off the UFO press light. So we're just gonna keep cruising here. Another thing I like to do is withdraw the case manually from station number five. Some cartridges, 762 by 39 being one of them, are a little bit stubborn on ejecting. And that just helps you get things smoothed out just a little bit more. It doesn't actually cost any extra time per se. Okay. Everything's overloaded. I got components, oh, we're out of primers there. Okay, got components falling from various places. So uh, that's the reloading process. It's straightforward and you're gonna hit some pretty high volumes. Before I continue reloading, I'm gonna add some more primers, make sure my powder level is correct. Then it's time to go out shooting. So let's talk about the results I got with these three rifles, starting with the most popular and going on to the least popular. This would have to be the most popular. The AK is a mainstay in the collection of rifles chambered in 762 by 39. To give you an idea, I did a performance comparison between this rifle and an AR-15 a while back looking at accuracy. With the AR non-free floated, I was getting about an inch and a half a little bit less actually groups at 100 yards and this baby was printing groups minute of pie plate approximately like seven inches around that value and that's still within the acceptance criteria that this rifle was designed for and that's fine with me as well i don't use an ak for long range shooting or long range accuracy it's really about close quarter stuff hits on steel defense those types of scenarios i've got this rifle equipped with a Silencer Co. Uh, hybrid can, and this is the same can, same configuration that I used back when I tested the KS-47, so that data should be apples to apples in terms of comparisons. So for each of the rifles, I did a couple things. Actually, I didn't do a couple things for the SKS because I forgot to test accuracy. I forgot I had it on hand, which is kind of funny. So at least for the AK-47, uh, style rifle and for the KS-47, I did limited accuracy testing just to see approximately off of a bag kind of what I would get. Uh, but for each of the rifles, I shot them over a chronograph to see what my average velocity and the standard deviation or the consistency of the velocity was gonna be. So for the testing I did here, uh, I'll show you the shooting of the shots across the chronograph. Okay, and I don't know if you saw it there, but the average velocity was 2,313.6 feet per second and the standard deviation was 17.5. That's actually a really, really good number. I've seen SDs up into the 40s. And again, it doesn't really matter as long as you're get, getting consistent functioning because that kind of a standard deviation won't really affect your performance at close quarter ranges for fast action shooting and that kind of thing. So going back to the story I did comparing the NPAP to the KS-47, when I did the in-depth overview of the KS-47, we had an average velocity for the NPAP for three different types of ammo of 2,256 feet per second. And here we got 2313.6. And so that's actually quite a bit better. I think this bullet in the CFE BLK and this particular load is great. And we could push it a little bit higher. I don't always like to push things to the max, especially if we don't need to, but this is absolutely solid performance. Now, in terms of the accuracy testing, I was kind of all over the place when I first got set up. I was using a pillow bag 
kind of mid rifle and then a game changer bag in the rear just to get kind of an approximate placement. And I was using a scope and scope mount. I have a video on this guy here. This has got the quick release mount for the side. This is like a BSA scope. <laughs> I mean, nothing special. Uh, but that's fine because the accuracy out of this rifle is nothing special. The last four rounds I had when I went up to the Ridgeline Ultimate Reloader shooting range printed 2.432 inches at 50 yards. So that's about a five inch group at 100 yards. I would have done a five shot group, but that was literally the last four rounds of ammunition that I had on hand. So with the NPAP, thumbs up with this load. This is my SKS. I've had this rifle forever, it seems like. And the only thing that I've done to it is I replaced this rear cover here with one that has a pick rail on it and I put a 4x30 scope on it. Now, there's a bit of rocking here where the scope mounts, so I don't think I would trust it for accuracy testing without a more legit setup. So maybe it's a good thing I forgot to bring this up the hill when I was testing the ammunition. It's got a bayonet. This has the 20 inch barrel, so it's kind of a standard model. This is made in China. These are getting harder to find. Uh, and in terms of velocity performance, let me show you the shots that I shot across the chronograph with this SKS. Nice. Hey, I like that. So here's what's interesting about the results. The average velocity for the SKS was 2334.4, and we had a standard deviation of 43.6. I'm not sure what happened there because that is like three times the SD that we had with the NPAP. Kind of a mystery, might need to do a little bit more testing with that. But the velocities for the 20 inch barrel here were only about 20 feet per second higher than what we saw with the NPAP which uh, I would have expected maybe a little bit more. Now with better scope setup, I would be really interested to see what kind of accuracy I could get out of the SKS since it does have the milled receiver, whereas the AK variant, the NPAP in this case, has the stamped receiver. Should do a little bit well. I think I'll have to reserve that for future testing to find out for sure. And finally, the least common of my 762 by 39 chambered rifles. This is the KS-47 from Palmetto State Armory. This is a hybrid AR. The upper is pretty much what you'd find on any AR-15 that has a free float handguard, but the lower is really where the hybrid comes in. It's got a standard fire control group, in other words, drop-in AR-15 trigger. It's got a standard grip, but it's got a magwell that's designed to accept 762 by 39 or AK mags. Because of the taper on the case, that means that those are going to feed most reliably. 10 and a half inch barrel, I've got it equipped with the Omega 300 from Silencego, just like I did with the original showdown between the KS-47 and the NPAP in this KS-47 overview story, which I will also link to in the video description. So we expect to see lower velocities, 10 and a half inch barrel compared to 16 inches on the AK variant and 20 inches on the SKS. Let me show you the shots that I fired across the chronograph. I know I have some POI ship. Okay. So again, you might not have seen it at the end there. We had an average velocity of 2,040.8 feet per second and an SD of 18.9 feet per second. That's very close to the 17.5 SD that we saw with the NPAP and well below the 43.6 feet per second SD that we saw with the SKS, which is still a little bit of a mystery to me. Now, compared to the original showdown, I tested three different types of ammunition in the KS-47, and we had an average of 2,089.73 feet per second. This time we were 
a little more than 40 feet per second below that. So what's interesting is the KS-47 was below with the same load. The other three types of ammo were consistent between the two tests, and the NPAP was well above what we saw with the other three types of ammo. Using the same load in both rifles this time. Again, a little bit of a mystery. But very respectable performance across the board. Very consistent. Very happy with this load. So there you go. Loading and shooting 762 by 39 with Barry's 123 grain plated spire point bullets. Don't forget, UR10 gets you 10% off the KMS squared light, and the ultimate code gets you 10% off any brass order at Capital Cartridge. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Also, I'd love to know, what are you doing with 7.62x39? Are you reloading for it? What cases, what powder, what bullets are you using? What are you shooting it in? Please drop a comment and we will discuss. Also, links down there in the video description. I'm on Patreon and I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. Any support that you guys can provide is most appreciated. Also, make sure you subscribe with notifications because I got a lot more 7.62x39 content coming up. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.